Hello and welcome to Let Me Boy You to Sleep. One thousand two hundred and one. You don't want to cuddle? Or I haven't got to. It's up to you. I thought you wanted to. All right. And um, yeah, this is Q and A Friday. Another Q and A Friday. Oh yes. Oh. Uh. I'm a bit tired. Uh, it's two minutes past 8 p.m. I have a grocery delivery coming. Should be by about quarter. Oh, 25 past 8. Between 25 past and quarter to 9. Because I've run out of stuff. So it's just stuff from the supermarket. Vinny, you are quite happy to be doing nothing now. You're all over the place. So this is actually... Oh, my name's Jason Newland. My website's jasonnewland.com, which is coming along quite nicely. I've now... I think I've got 30, maybe 40 more recordings to upload to the Let Me Boy to Sleep catalogue in order to be completely updated or up to date so that's good and I'm now currently got well I've just I've just today I have made a new recording this afternoon it's only been uploaded about an hour ago and I don't even know what it's called what's it called oh yeah pre-surgery affirmations and it's for Molly it's also for every, anyone else that's you know got surgery coming up or anything because I posted something that Molly about Molly on the Facebook group Jason Newland's boring group and I was just thinking, because she's got her surgery on Monday, so I want to wish her well for that. I also, I, f I wanted to do something, but I didn't know what, I didn't know what. I've already made a few recordings over the last week, kind of aimed at Molly for the... Um, uh, well, not the one about carrier bags. <laughs> that wasn't aimed at Molly. Um, but I can't remember what I've done. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So I did Healing Thursday. Last Thursday before last. Or last Thursday, not this week. And then this week I have done... Uh, looking Forward which was another recording it was a Let Me Boy to Sleep but also it was kind of aimed at Molly aimed at Molly and it was uh, yesterday it was kind of Healing Thursday but I didn't name it that I just called it That Healing Feeling because I was so excited about rhyme, and then today I did the pre-surgery affirmations. So I hope that it's of use, or those videos, or that the recordings are of use. Also got them on YouTube as well. So that's it, really. That's what I'd let you know that. Um. So. Molly, hope, fingers crossed, and, you know, everything goes to plan on Monday. It's Friday now, so, you know, enjoy the weekend. Monday, hopefully that will be the start of a, a much better place for you, because you'll have that horrible stuff removed, and you'll be able to get on with your healing. 
So, yeah. So this is Q&A Friday. Q&A Friday. I do have some questions. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. <sighs> right, I just got a phone call then. Oh, Vin Vinny! Please, mate, come on. What? What? His tail's waggling. He's all excited now. All excited. God, oh, man, what's going on with you, eh? You're all acting all strange the last few days. Right, now, that's enough now. That's enough. That's enough. Enough, mate. Come on, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at my phone so I can see the questions. And he is literally pushing the phone out of the way. Oh, now he's, now he's calmed. I'm going to ignore you now and you just have to calm down. So what you want? Do you, you want to... <laughs> what do you want? I don't know if he wants me to hold him so he's got his back, to, you know, so he's got lying on his back and he wants to cuddle. But I did that a second ago and he didn't want that. But he keeps climbing on my lap. What? I think what he wants is to play fight. But I can't do it now, Vinny. You pick the weird times all day. All day you could have done this, but no, right now, when I'm doing a recording, you want to play. Hey? You're such a woolly head. You're such a woolly head. Right, I'm just going to do this recording anyway, regardless of him trying to sabotage me. I just need to find the... Right, Q&A Friday. Or oh, I have a question from last week, which I would do first. From... Uh... Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 one week. Uh, okay, right. I'm sure I had a comment from last week, newest. Okay, yeah, I do. From Ruth. Uh, okay, I'm a bit late, but one maybe for next week. So, yeah, I'm, I'll do that. I'll do you first. Um... Only, yeah, this, this was yesterday, so I'll I'll do your... Oh, Vinny, stop, stop. It keeps treading on my um, delicate bits. Stop it. I'm a bit late. No, I'm a bit late. But one may uh, for next week. Okay. You have a real way with words. Would you ever consider... <laughs> stop staring at me. Stop. <laughs> He's just staring at me like tipping his head from side to side. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, man. Now, he wants... Calm down. Calm down, Vinny. Calm down. Good boy. Hey. That's it. Calm down. Calm down. Right. His ear is sticky for some reason. Why is your ear sticky, Vinny? Eh? Hey? Calm down. Calm down. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's it. Calm down. Calm down. You're such a good boy. Yes, you are. You are so good. You can relax now, aren't you? Your eyes getting heavy, yeah. You're starting to fall asleep already, aren't you? Yeah. Is it nice to be so calm, relaxed? Yeah. So relaxed. Peaceful. Hey. It's nice to have your 
Your belly and your chest are up, isn't it? Yeah. How quickly you calm down. Ah, right. So he started barking then. Can we just do this recording? He's, re he's really disrupting the recording today. So this is Ruth. I'm a bit late, but maybe, but one maybe for next week. You have a real way with words. Would you ever consider writing a book? Maybe a self-help or inspirational book? Ooh. Um, hmm. I don't know if I'd be very inspirational. Um, hmm. Well, thank, thank you very much for your kind words, Ruth. Uh, I don't know. I'd like, I mean, I love books. Always have done since, well, since I learned to read. I, so for at least 10 years, <laughs> I, I thought about writing a book about my life. Which would kind of be, I suppose clips, clips, uh, you know, like bits from the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcasts, because that is what I tried to do. I started transcribing the recordings, hundreds of them, and I thought what I'll do is, if I can find the right AI software, I can start asking the PDF files. Mm, not a great name, I don't think, really, to be fair. <laughs> PDF files. PDF, PDF files. Um, in fact, I think it's not P. They shouldn't really be called PDF files because I think the F stands for files. So it should just be PDFs. It's, which is like, you know, digital copy of a text document. So, I thought it'd be good if I could ask, you know, all of my recordings, like thousand odd recordings, questions. For example, tell me everything about the chip shop. And then just grab every single reference to the chip shop. And I could, you know, I could, so I could put stuff in, all the things in by topics, and then tell me everything about the children's home, and then everything sorted by that. Uh, tell me every every time I met, basically every time I mentioned something. So every time I mentioned Christmas, every time I mentioned Bruce Lee or martial arts, karate. Every time I mention boxing, every, you know, you, you see what I mean? So just, and then I could start maybe panning out the the book of my life. The thing, it would be boring because it, my life's been boring. So it'd be a boring book. But I did think, I did, 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 did think that I could potentially do a book version of this where, but what, what it would be, it would probably be, I, I don't know how this would come across in written form. So, I don't know. Because if the for the Let Me Boy to Sleep book, it'd be something that maybe you, you read a chapter and you get so tired reading it and so bored reading it that you just drift off. So I did wonder if... Meh. And I thought, well, I can't do a silly voice on her. In a book. 
then maybe I don't need to do a silly voice <laughs> ever anyway. I don't know. So I did think about doing that. When I write, is like, for example, if I was to write a blog, which I have done in the past, I had a little bit of a following actually. Back in... 97, not 97, 2007. I started writing a blog, you know, a written blog, talking about my life, talking about what I was doing. And it was around the period, I remember I just started university and I'd moved to a different town and I was submitting the blog, I think I had it on Blogger, and I was submitting it to ev the RSS feed to pretty much everywhere. So all of the blog places had my blog on it. A bit like what I did with the podcast, I guess. And yeah, I had I had a fair few people who used to read my blog. I couldn't even tell you what happened to it. It might still be out there somewhere. So, yep, I was interrupted by the delivery. So what have I had? I've had since I've been doing this recording, interrupted by Vinny jumping all over me. Then I had a phone call. The phone was on silent, but that was the interruption, so I had to answer that because it's an elderly neighbor. I just wanted to make sure that he was okay. And then... Vinny started barking at something that wasn't there. And then 10 minutes later, we started barking at something that was there, which was a delivery. Man. So, uh, back to Ruth's question. I don't know about self-help or inspirational book because I don't know what I would say. And if I was going to do something like that, I would want to be original. And I don't know if I have, I don't know if I could be original. Because, you know, I've read so many books, self-help inspirational books and listen to so many audio books over the years that I don't know if where 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 the stuff comes from it might be me it might be someone else I might be <laughs> I might be talk, I might be saying something that Tony Robbins said 40 years ago or when he was only 43 I might be saying something that Louise Hay said, or it's just the, the list is endless, really. Ziggy Ziglar, Jim Rohn. Wow, they're all blibbing gone now. Nearly all of the main people, apart from, um, the one I mentioned at the beginning, what's his name? But they look really big. Okay, I suppose the general public might class... I forgot his name, I already said his name just now. They might class him as the top, but... Because of the, all the info commercials that were in America... However, in the self-help world, the the real superstars, you know, that were around a lot, lot, lot long before him, they're all gone. They've all, you know, departed. I mean, Louise Hay was huge, huge star. Jim Rohn, Ziggy Ziglar, Zig Ziglar, Ziggy Ziglar, Zig Ziglar. Um, yeah, it's there's a lot of people, and I've I've listened to pretty much 
all of them and or read their books maybe not all the books but it is yeah I don't know that's the thing if I was going to sort of write a book I want it to be original uh, I don't mind so much if I'm doing a recording and let's face it a lot of these recordings are almost throwaway recordings you know people might listen to them once and then that's it move on to the next one but I might I think the the, the main podcast that I had before and there is a playlist in fact I've got them on uh, my website is the relax relaxation hypnosis of stress anxiety and panic attacks that was a time when I was I was making them very regularly and I was just talking from not just talking from the heart really and I would say that's some of my best stuff. No one listens to it, of course. Of course they don't. Ooh. <laughs> no one wants to listen to my good stuff. No, I just I just think they were from a creative perspective. I, I well, I think these are pretty creative at times, but yeah, from a they, I think they were quite inspirational. Because, uh, you know, some of the hypnosis stuff I've done, I would say a lot of it is very samey. Me just talking and doing a body scan or counting down or, you know, just focusing on relaxation and being tired. And drifting off. And. Admittedly I don't listen to them. But I don't know how different they were. And I've done a lot. Over the years. I think yeah some of them. Probably were really good. I don't think any of them were really bad. Apart from that one, <laughs> there was that one. Oh, I don't know. I really, I'm not sure. Oh, I did do. Oh, I years. I mean, we're talking, blimey, over a decade ago, probably. I don't know. It might be when I was living here. But I did a recording where I sang. But it was kind of like chanting. <laughs> it wasn't it didn't come out great it didn't come out great but what is weird not weird but I spent 10 days in 19 no 2008 maybe 2009 putting together a stop smoking course 10 days I spent doing that and I could do that in that course yeah I could do it in probably 3 hours now it's weird isn't it it's just it would be incredibly easy just to do something I guess it wasn't the, it was trying to get it to sound okay. Trying to get the sound, the editing, it was like non, the editing took forever. And all that stuff is a lot easier now with better equipment and just generally, I suppose because I've been doing it for so long now, it's kind of rolls off my tongue I suppose like a oh dear I was like, like a grape why would you roll a grape off your tongue that's just weird that's getting very erotic isn't it so I don't know regarding books I'd love to write a book but if I was 
I mean, I suppose I could do what some of the self-help people do is find my own little angle and generalize on it. So I used to have this thing called a therapy that I called it fine focus therapy. See, you didn't know that, did you? Hey, you didn't know that about me. I had my own therapy. I never trademarked marked it or anything like that. Because I could call it anything. So, But that's kind of what I thought about calling it. And I discovered it whilst meditating. And I had this pain in my knee. Because I was at that point I was still meditating on the floor. Sitting on cushions. So I was, yeah, it was... It was never suit. I mean, that was that was hard for me to do when I was a teenager. Never mind now. Well, I was in my early thirties at the time. Not when I was a teenager. I mean, when I was meditating. So I was in the meditation room on my own. I think during the lunchtime. I was having a little lunchtime meditation, and I had this pain in my knee, just because it was. It's, I don't know what it was. It's not like I was bending it the wrong way. I was definitely going the right way. So what I did is I focused. And I was really into chronic pain at the time. Not, not into it in a a weird way. I mean into it as in helping other people to relieve their chronic pain. Which is what I was fascinated about. So I was studying that for years. Anyway, I I decided to look for the pain. Look for it. And it's a little bit, but uh, yeah, it was kind of... Comes from the idea, really, of, you know, when you've got, like, anger... Or can you hold it in your hand? If you can't hold it in your hand, then it's not its not a real thing, is it? It's an emotion, it's a feeling. But if you can't hold it in your hand, where is it? And when you search for something, so how did the, the emotion kind of has a tendency to dissolve or change? And I just thought, I'm going to look at the knee. Well, not not actually look at it, but like focus on the knee. But not trying to cause my knee to relax. Not trying to take the pain away. Not trying to anything. Just really to look. Just focus on it. And the more I focused on it, the more it kind of, almost like it didn't want me to to see it, didn't want me looking. It was shy. But what I did is I went inside the feeling. Almost like magnifying something, continuing to magnify, continuing to magnify, to the point where you just got an atom. It's like there's kind of nothing there. And I kept looking deeper, deeper, deeper. Kept focusing deeper into the feeling. To a point where there was nothing there. Like the feeling had gone. And I thought, ooh. So for about a year, maybe two years, I played around with this. I say two years. What was this? 2004 five, six, seven, about three years. Three years I played around with it. So whenever I had a physical issue, whether it's a pain in my foot or my leg or just something that was muscular or skeletal, I would focus on it and go deep into that pain, focus deep into that physical feeling. And when you do that, I think it was, uh, don't worry, I'm not, this is not a pain relief recording, I'm just 
just shooting the breeze. I'm just telling you about that. Um, can you imagine if I was listening and thinking, it worked, it was really good. What do you mean? Tell me, I want to carry on. I don't want to hear about the books now. I want to tell you about my book. So, if I'd been like a, quite a lot of, I've noticed a few inspirational or self-help people, they come up with a, a maybe a unique idea or a new technique or something, and it sometimes seems to take over. And, you know, let's use it for everything. I know I've got a friend who goes to see a, a jaw specialist. And he literally thinks that every single ailment that ever occurs in a human body is to do with the jaw. And I heard about another person who had the same thing about uh, posture. It's all about posture. You know, if you get your posture right, everything else is fine. Uh, and other people are like, yeah, if you don't eat sugar, everything else. That's me, isn't it? No, it's so, I don't want to be a general, generalized like that. To suddenly think that I can, I mean, yeah, blind me if it works for everything good, but. Well, I've found it doesn't work for everything because I still do test it. I've been using it for, blimey, over a decade. 15 years or whatever. 13, 14 years, 15 years. No, two, since 2004. What's it now? 20 years, blimey. It was the summer 2004, so... I've... Well, probably spring, actually. So, yeah, I've been using it for... 20 years it's only for small ailments I've never tr really tried it with anything yeah because I think it's, it's important to not just to find out the cause before getting rid of the stuff so yeah so yeah I'd, I'd love to write a book that's kind of one of my goals in life I'd say you know get a get a, and get a degree I want to be a doctor I want a doctorate I want a PhD I'll be 90 by the time I get it but I still want to get it black belt I want to get black belt and I'd like yeah to write a book but knowing the way I work I would probably end up writing lots of books in the way that I do the recordings you know and I'd end up like writing a book a week and I do still like the idea maybe of doing two things like doing my life story and maybe doing a boring book like specifically and I can go even more even more detailed boring wise but the strange thing is if I wrote it down so if I wasn't talking to you and I was writing it's the same process really it's just writing but it's different things would come up completely different things it's a different I don't really know how to explain it. It's just, I guess it's a similar thing, but it's because it's words, it's a different format, a different way to communicate. Hmm. So, yeah, I would like, I would like that. That'd be groovy. But I don't know. So, yeah, that's, that's that question answered. Finney's started to bark now. Brilliant. Well done, Vinny. What a great, great thing. I...
<laughs> oh, sorry, I just see something on Facebook. Um, it was funny, someone doing press-ups, but their arms are wobbling. Uh, 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 I'm trying to find, where is it? Where is it? Oh, okay, questions. Hi, any questions? So I've got four questions, which have been posted yesterday. Or, yeah, yesterday, I think. So the first question is from Barry. Well, the second question, because I've already answered one, is from Barry. What has been your most embarrassing moment? Uh, it's hard to pick one. There's been a few little moments in my life. Two come to, to mind straight away. One was uh, when I was canvassing back in 1989. I was 18. And... It was during the summer, and we were just uh, we used to go out in the evenings from like four till four till eight or four till seven, yeah, depending. And the Jeff, who was the boss, he would drive us around. He had this moustache, which was like a, an old RAF. Well, he wasn't an old RAF pilot from because he was. Oh, I don't even know how old he was. He was retired, so I think he was in his 70s then. Very funny, very funny man. Always swearing. And he had, his two front teeth were missing. <laughs> and he's just... He, he, he was in the RAF and during the war and stuff, and then he left and he became a double glazing salesman. So his whole career he was selling... And then he retired and decided to keep a, an income coming in by having a canvassing team for a double glazing company. So that's what he did. He drove us around. He... Anyway, there's one particular evening where we sometimes we start either side of the street or and we'd end up meeting up and then kind of would have done that road and me and the two there was a man and his wife there as well they was a couple of years older than me probably five years older or something and they were lovely and so I I, uh, we, we got on really well. So Dean, he, he was, he was funny. His wife, Natalie, was better than both of us. Because all of her leads, so she got an appointment with someone. Let's say, you know, Monday or Saturday at 11 o'clock, if she got an appointment, the salesman or per salesperson would get there and they would get in and it'd be a real appointment. Sometimes when I got an appointment, the salesperson would get there and the person that lived there would think that it was a window cleaner because I hadn't made myself clear. I don't know how, honestly, I don't know how they thought I was trying to get a window cleaner to go around. But, yeah, so, so I would get more. A Dean would get more than me. I would get more than Natalie. But Natalie, her ones would be the best. The best, you know, the best actual ones. Because she, she's just, yeah, she was really good. And she was quiet, and she was lovely, and she didn't, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll be on people's doorsteps just talking a bunch of rubbish. 
I had some bloke chase me with an axe once. <laughs> he didn't want me to knock on his door, so for some reason I found that funny. And then he went in and he brought an axe out, and I found that even funnier. Which is it's a bit weird. But, oh well. He, uh... Yeah, I, don't, I didn't get an appointment with him. Anyway, one evening, we were all standing around. Didn't know where Jeff was. Jeff was the boss. Didn't know where he was. So we were just standing around, having a laugh, and we were just making fun of him. The old whatever. We were just, just basically making fun of him. Just, you know, being rude. As... I was a teenager, so I, I could get away with it. But it was not in a, not a horrible way, but it was just, you know, just taking the pee or whatever. So we're laughing at him. We're laughing about him. And then we look over, we see a bloke get into his car. Don't think anything of it. And, but they're like, the, we just... So we're, we're facing the car, so I'm watching this bloke, and he pulls out, and there's Jeff crouching over, listening to us. Now, I think he was pretending to do his shoelaces up or something, but we just see them, and he must have been, it doesn't take five minutes to do, to do your shoelaces up. So he was listening to us, and it was so funny because we were talking about it. I don't know, it's hard to... I mean, I was a bit embarrassed with that. There is another one that I have told before, which is quite rude. Um, I remember, I, 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 yeah, I missed... Uh, 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 I missed, understood what someone said once. It was the last day of school, and one of my friends said to me, these are his words, okay? I saw the teacher, and he, and he, and he said, your report card is really good this year. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, oh, brilliant. I thought he was telling me that my report card was really good this year, but he wasn't, he was telling that my friend, that his report card was really good this year when he said your report card is really good this year. I misunderstood, so I went home with my report in the envelope, untouched, feeling quite, you know, quite happy, quite relieved, almost looking forward to it. And yeah, it wasn't exactly how I thought it would be. I never had a good report. It was always, you know, just... I wish I could see them now. I wish I could... You know, the good thing about people that go to school now, all your stuff is on record. It's all being digitally collated and... It'll probably be available for you to read. I say, like, anyone's listening, but, you know, when you're 50, you could probably still look back at that stuff. All my stuff got burnt. Like, the school burnt it. I said, I remember, because I, I did do exams, and I wanted to sort of have a look. I, I failed all of them, but the ones I did do. But I kind of wanted to just, have a look at it just to see whether or not they see what you know whether I could remember correctly because I think I got unclassified for most stuff and I went in there probably 90 early 90s maybe 96 bear in mind I only left school in 86 it's not a long time they said no we burnt them all burnt all the all the documents all the files I said you burnt all the students' exam information. She said, no, no, just yours. I said, why? She said, because you have fleas 
<laughs> no, she didn't say that. She said, I... No, she, everybody, I just got rid of them all. Like, it's a bit rude, isn't it? And it wasn't, you know, 10... I'm not sure if it, it was even 10 years. It might have been early 90s. So it's a few years. The school was still there. It's now closed. But it was there. So I wonder why they would just destroy all the records of the students. Seems like a weird thing to do. Yeah. Okay, so another thing. Ugh, embarrassing, embarrassing. There is one, but I have to be very... I have to t no, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. There is one. It involves um, being in a sleeping bag and staying over my friend's house. Well, actually, uh, okay, that's a different one, uh, a contest we had, but okay, forget that. There was, I got drunk when I was about, I don't know whatever age I was, I was still at school. But it was uh, one of the student, I don't know if it was a strike day or, I don't know. But me and my friends, we went around my friend's house and I was probably 14. 15 maybe, 14 probably. And I ended up going and doing my paper round, my evening paper round. And then I went into the shop the next day and I was asked, where did I deliver all my papers? And I said, what do you mean? He said, not one person got their paper yesterday. <laughs> I don't know what I did with them. I don't remember. And I said, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I'm not sure if I got in trouble. Yeah, how did I explain that one away? I've got no idea. I really don't know. But it definitely happened. And... I'm trying to think of a really embarrassing... Okay, this happened when I was about 16... I was working in a chip shop, maybe 17 actually, not 16, 17. So my boss, this is when I moved upstairs above the chip shop. I, my boss had a house, he bought a house and we invited all the staff around for a, like a party, I guess, just to get together. And it was giving me, I was drinking pints of lager or was it bottles of lager? I don't know. But I was drinking, I think, drinking pints of lager. And I got merry and was just acting a bit silly. And I think at the end of the night, they all found it hilarious that I'd only been drinking non alcoholic lager. So that was, yeah, that was definitely embarrassing. But in a quite a horrible way, actually, because it's quite a cruel thing to do. I think it's, I think it's, I don't know, especially when it's your boss doing it. And to do it, I think you can get away with it at certain ages, but not to a 17 year old. It's just, I don't know, just it really, I should let it go, shouldn't I? Let it go, baby, let it go. Yeah, that was embarrassing. I've embarrassed myself many, 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 many times. Many times. Um, yeah, another time was when I was a counsellor. No, this is before I was a counsellor. No, this is when I was doing the... 
the free pain relief service 2006 so after visiting people's homes for a while I decided to rent a room on a Saturday morning a therapy room and I just charged people the amount it cost for the room which was £10 an hour and that was it so it's still free but they just they paid for the room so I booked the room from like 9 to 1 something like that and there was a waiting room downstairs and it's, it's a nice setup well on my routine this is back when I was drinking in the evenings so I'd had a drink it's just yeah Friday night finished work went home I might have gone to the pub Friday night and then I woke up Saturday morning got up went to McDonald's on the way had a egg McMuffin and then you know went upstairs into the place went upstairs went to the toilet <laughs> yeah. and um, you know I did what needed to be done and I came out the toilet and there was a lady waiting and I was like that was embarrassing because there was no way of opening the window it was one of the, you know there's really tiny toilets that aren't even really big enough to you have to back in you know or take those take the ceiling off to get into it it was one of those kind of toilets so I really I wanted to say to her that it wasn't me but it was me and she could you know who else was it like this isn't me, you know. I just don't know. I mean, it could only it could only have been worse, right? If I'd have come out and said, "Oh, so wait a minute," as she was walking in. So wait a minute, I forgot to wash my hands. Or I forgot to wipe. That would be worse. Yeah. So that, so it's very embarrassing. And then what made it worse is. It turns out that she was my first customer. So I'd never met her before. I spoke to her on the phone or had a text or something. <laughs> so I go downstairs to to collect my first client and it was her, the woman that had used a toilet after me. And I just like, uh, that was just... It was embarrassing. We got through it, but it was embarrassing because... It just wasn't a human smell, you know. It was something alien. Just, uh. but anyway, that's uh, that was embarrassing. Um, another embarrassing thing. Me, 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 me. I remember. I was I was embarrassed, but no one else was around. I went to school, got up, had my breakfast, got ready, went to school. I thought, oh, I'll get in here early. Sometimes I like to get to school early so I could just walk around the field and sing to myself or read a book or whatever. And the gates were closed and I couldn't figure out why. It was a Saturday morning. I couldn't believe, like, what? Now, we're talking about a school that took about 45 minutes to get to. It wasn't a, well, it wasn't, it was quite a distance away. So I was a little bit embarrassed, but no one else knew about it. Uh, another thing, another similar thing happened where when I was in the Sea Cadets, me and my friend, we both turned up at this event in our uniform, Sea Cadet uniform, but we were the only people there. And the event, we basically got the wrong day. So that was, that was strange. Um, yeah, there's another, another embarrassing moment. I asked uh, a female out for a date and she said yes 
she worked in a travel agency. And I had the, I don't know, I had the, the guts or the, the bravery to ask her out in front of her work colleagues. Uh, I was, what was I, 18 at the time. I can't believe I did it, but I did it. And she said yes. I'd seen her before previously, uh, once, because uh, her car broke down. So my friend helped her to get home. Now, that's not the embarrassing part. That's actually the really nice part of the story. Uh, the fact that she said yes. My problem is I couldn't believe she said yes. Because she was a beautiful woman. She was older than me. Probably in her early 20s. I just couldn't believe that she said that she said yes. I was like, did you hear me correctly? And instead of leaving, which would have been the correct thing to do, I stayed around and I carried on talking to her for about an hour, maybe longer. So I went from having a date to no longer having a date to her no longer talking to me because I annoyed her. I mean, she was at work. She didn't want me hanging around talking rubbish. And I basically talked myself out of a date. I mean, that's what the, that's the whole point of the first date, isn't it? In order to talk her out of liking me. But no, I did is I just... Jumped the gun. I did it before we even went out. Normally, I you know wait until we go out first. But yeah, that was embarrassing. What other things? I'm trying to think of things that happened at school. All oh, right, it is an embarrassing one. When I was having my appendix out. Not what not while I was having my appendix out, but. You, when I was in hospital, I had my appendix out. I'd had them out, and the basically they didn't seem to want me to. I think I might have had a drip, like a morphine drip or something. I can't remember. So they they but I wanted to go and get a comic. I knew where the comics were, they were in a big box. It was like comics and books and stuff, and I wanted to get one. And it was near the ex it's like the entrance or the exit where the toilet was. So I thought, oh, Miss And I got up and started walking, What are you doing? Little Jason. I said, I was gonna go to the toilet. Oh, you need to go to the toilet, it's okay. She like and she made me do it there. I didn't make me do it, but she said, oh, it's okay. You're not ready to walk around yet because of your stitches. And I stood there and she held. Why did she help? Why did she just let me do it myself? She held the little um, cardboard nozzle thing that they used to have. Maybe they still have them for me to do a wee wee in. So... There's this nurse, right? I'm 12. She's probably not much older than 18, 19. And I got me weather out. And she's probably the first female to ever see me wazzle. And I just did not feel comfortable. And my bladder was very shy. In fact, it wasn't just shy. It didn't need to be, I didn't need to go to the toilet. I'd had hardly any liquid because I don't you know how it wasn't long ago that I'd had the operation. So I wasn't even on solid foods yet. So I just had a little bit of water and that. So I didn't, you know, didn't need, and it's like, at the end of it, 
a little dribble came out at the end. She said, uh, oh, do you want some comics? Do you want me to get some comics for you? So after all that, she just, just ask if you need them. It's almost like she knew. She knew why I was trying to, where I was trying to get to. That was a little bit embarrassing. Like skid marks on a beach. Honestly, it was very... I thinking what else? The embarrassing moments. Oh yeah, I remember I was chatting a chatting a female up when I was in a in a comedy club and I bent over to talk to her. She was working she was eating rather. She was at a dinner table, she asked me a question. So I bent over and I wasn't like in her face, but I was like, you know, so she could hear me. So we were just chatting and my chewing gum fell out of my mouth. <laughs> and she just looked at me like, oh, I just said, I'll see her. <laughs> I said to walk away. It's, it, that was the end of that relationship. It's just, there's only so much you can do after that. Yeah. What other things have I done? Embarrassing. So I'm not sure about the most embarrassing thing. I don't know how embarrassed I actually get, to be honest. It's not a huge... I might get embarrassed, but it's not not, not like a, a real deal. You know, I find if you just keep away from people that you're in, just don't don't ever see them again, it's fine. Oh, yeah, there was another. Oh no, I can't tell you this story. I uh, I had a girlfriend, and she she said, "Oh, I've got an idea." So it was in bed, right there. She said to me, she ran out downstairs, came upstairs. With a yogurt, a yogurt pot. And she put it and she said, Oh, wait a second. Hold on to this. I'll be right back. I I thought she was going to be using that for fun. I think that's why I use that word. And she comes up and she's holding a spoon. Yeah, anyway. I'll move on from that one. So that was... I remember my, uh, my brother... I was When I was going through my... When I first started doing weights when I was a kid. And I was doing karate and I was doing weights. And I had a, my gym down the garden. And I used to go to the local gym as well. And I had this mirror... So what I did, I stood on the the balcony, not the balcony, like the the top of the stairs, which faced right at the mirror, so I could see my whole body, and I was doing <laughs> muscle poses, you know, it's like grunting, like trying to like the Hulk, and and I heard this big burst of laughter, and my brother was behind me on the stairs just laughing at me so yeah that was a bit embarrassing what other things I think my yeah one of one of my elderly relatives no I won't I won't say <laughs> no uh, what, I'm trying to think Mm, 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 
embarrassing, embarrassing, embarrassing. I think the other day I said hello to someone that didn't know who I was and I realised I'd never seen them before. That was a little bit embarrassing. Um, there was this woman that I worked with and we never got on. Like just, she, she'd always kind of say the opposite. And I had this, I've talked about this before, but she was the HR lady, person, human. And she worked literally behind my little department, which was at that time checking people's phone calls. That's what it was, just listening to phone calls. That's what I did for a living for about a year and a half, I think. Four, five, no longer, blimey. Four, six, seven, yeah, a year and a half. So, from 2006 all the way to June 2007, I think. Anyway, you know, to give you an example what she was like, she'd always say the opposite. So, I bided my time and I said, to my, you know, to the people. They said, oh, what are you doing a weekend? This is, they said to me, my team, I said, oh, I'm looking forward to Saturday because it's uh, the launch of this year's X Factor. And the first thing she's, because she's literally sitting behind us, first thing she shouts out is, oh, not that crap, not the X Factor. Completely stumped her because I knew that she's a huge X Factor fan and she got confused. It was very funny to watch. Now I'd waited, I mean, literally, I'd waited for months to do that, just waiting because I, I always like I was planning, I'm gonna, but I thought I saw an opportunity and. It all, it almost like it short circuited her brain. She didn't know what to do with that because her natural reaction was to say the opposite to what I was saying, or to disagree with what I was saying. But the fact is, she agreed with what I was saying, and it didn't compute. It was really funny. Anyway, we never got on. Really, didn't didn't really like each other. Well, she left to get another job. The new HR person was lovely. Got on really well with her. I see her about a year later. This, this, the one that we didn't get on. I forgot. I forgot that we didn't like each other. And I'm best friends with her. Like, hi, oh, yeah, are you right? I completely forgot that we, we were worst enemies. <laughs> And that was embarrassing because I was like, oh, I... and then I realized, so yeah, I can't think, <laughs> the, trying to think of other things that I have done to be embarrassed about. There's quite a few things over the years. I can't think of anything offhand, but that was a bit weird. Um... What did I do? I'm sure. Yeah, I think the... I went outside and I've got pink... pink Crocs. And the neighbour, the new neighbour downstairs, the first thing she saw was the pink Crocs. I didn't know that she was down there, but I'd, I forgot, because normally I put my shoes on when I go downstairs. And for some reason I forgot. 
and that was her first impression of me pink crocs and she found it very funny so that was a bit embarrassing um there was another thing it's in a place i worked where i was talking to a female on the, on the sales floor that this is when i was working downstairs in compliance she told everybody that I was, um, I don't know how to, to say it, that I had shown interest in her, not not in a, a weird way, but she said that I had reacted to her, or parts of me had reacted to her. Which is probably just the way my trousers were. But she was going, she was telling people. Oh, he was down here. He was talking to me and he had a, what's it? I was like. And I thought, I could get in trouble for that, if it was true. I didn't. You know, nothing came of it, because I don't know what was going on. Why, why, was, why I don't know why she was saying it. Before I had someone shouting. So yeah, I um that was weird. I've embarrassed myself a lot actually over the years. Many times. Probably too many times to even count. But it's not so much embarrassing myself because I don't always feel embarrassed when I've done that. I was more trying to focus on something that I felt embarrassed about. Hmm. I suppose leaving the toilet door open in a public toilet. Sometimes I've done that a couple of times. And someone just walked in. That's not good. Oh, there was one time. Oh, I was in the female toilets. Uh, and before anyone says anything... It was at the comedy club. The club was closed. The female toilets were way nicer than the men's toilets. And there was only one one toilet in the, you know, the rest was cubicles. The females, I think there was four or maybe five. So we were closed. The club was closed. There was no public in there. And I just needed to do a a woo woo so a poo okay let's just, just say it as it is I, that's what I need to do so two things happened that were very strange in the same <laughs> same place the first one was someone told all, someone turned all the lights off and went upstairs because they used to drink upstairs because there was a club up there as well so they'd close all, turn all the lights off because the, the lights to the toilets were in at the bar. And then they'd go upstairs and I was there in pitch black. So that wasn't so good. But worse than that, that wasn't so much embarrassing more than just like, uh, I'm not sure, did I shout? So they, no, I don't know. But yeah, that wasn't good. The second one, it was embarrassing because I was in there and it was a sneaky thing. It's like I didn't go in there when there's women in there, obviously. But I thought everyone had gone upstairs and there was toilets upstairs so there's no reason for anyone to be downstairs, really. I was just finishing up. And so I went in there to have a nice relaxing toilet and what do I hear? The door go. And I hear two voices. Two of the waitresses talking. And they did all, all the doors were closed anyway. The toilets they just automatically closed on their own, like the, the cubicles. So I just kept quiet because I was just so embarrassed. I mean, I should have just shouted straight away. Like, oh yeah, I'm in here. Just so they knew. <laughs> but I left it too late 
if you know what I mean. I'd left it too, because I was, I was in shock a little bit. And I left it too long for them to not think it was weird. Now, some might think it's weird anyway, but, you know, it, was, it wasn't about being in the female toilets. It was just the men's toilets was, well, it's always blocked at the end of the night generally. So I, not always, but I just, the females thought they were much better looked after. And plus I had all this material on the inside, like, and it was nice. I don't know about you, but I like to stroke something when I'm on a toilet. And I always, it was like fur, but like a zebra kind of skin. It wasn't proper, it wasn't animal skin, but it was really nice in there. Put no, I paid no attention to the men's toilets. They just put all this effort into the female ones. And I, if I'd have said something after a couple of minutes, then that, I think that'd have made it worse. Because like, <laughs> what was I doing? They probably would have screamed. They were like, what are you doing? And they listening to us. So it got to the point where it was too late to say anything. But at the same time, I couldn't move, couldn't do anything. I didn't know how long they were going to be. Luckily, they weren't there for long. So half an hour, an hour or something. Now they weren't there very long and then they went and I just finished up and everything. But it was, yeah. After that, I tried to Yeah, I tried to use the men's after that, to be honest. Which is what I... Sp I mean, it, it was closed. There was no one around. I thought everyone had gone. Honestly, I really thought I was the only one downstairs. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a female toilet user. What else? That was embarrassing, though. Oh, was another one where I... I have this, do I need to tell you this stuff? I why am I telling you this stuff? I have a habit ever since I have had mobile phones that take pictures. So it's been you know, quite a few years now. Whenever I get a new phone, I always, the first picture I take is, um, a rude picture, <laughs> like down the trousers picture. I just can't help it. I just, just, it's just what I do. I just like to see, <laughs> I like to see what the picture is like. I never saved the picture. I normally delete it. Well, on this occasion, I forgot to delete it, and I am round on my dad's house. And I was taking pictures of, I think, maybe them. Because I had a new camera, a new phone, like taking pictures. And my dad's wife says, oh, let's have a look. So I'm, I'm holding the camera and to get the pictures up. The first picture that came up was my... <laughs> nutsack. <laughs> was my... Um, bits and bobs which I took a picture of which was very immature but hey um, that came up on the screen luckily just at that second she, my dad said something to her and she looked over and I quickly you know told her wait wait look look at this no I didn't I said I got rid of it I couldn't believe it it was so close that um to, a, to be in a very, very embarrassing moment. Uh, I still do it though. That's the weird thing about it. <laughs> it's a tradition. It's, it's a Jason Newland tradition. It's a weird tradition to have. You know, it's just one of my tradition things. But I don't keep them. And I don't, it's not like I send them to anyone. Blimey. Ugh. But I do. 
I would never, f- yeah, that there was. Mm. That happened once where I was called dating, semi dating someone. It was, a, it was online, it's a long time ago, like over 20 years ago. And we were talking on the phone and everything, and she said, uh, Do you, I can send you, send you a picture of myself. And I said, well, I can't, I haven't got that kind of phone. So, no, I, did, I think you sent me a picture and I could receive pictures, but I couldn't send them because there was no camera on my phone. That's how long ago it was. And she said, well, I've sent you a picture of me. That's it. I sent you a picture of me. Because it's the start, just a picture of a face. That's, that's all I wanted. That's a big lie. That's all I wanted. No, nope, still a lie. And she said, and she sent another picture of her knees, you know. So then she said, uh, your turn. I said, what do you mean, my turn? She said, I want to see what you look like. I said, well, I don't have a camera on my phone. She said, well, that's convenient, isn't it? I said, not really. No. She said, well, you need to sort it out. Go and get a camera phone. So I did. I went and got a camera phone. <laughs> it's, it's, I, you know, I needed to upgrade. To be fair, I don't think I ever used that phone. It's just I never had need for camera phones back then. So I got a cam, I got a phone with a camera, and I sent her a picture of my face. There you go, and she, she sent a message back saying, "Hmm, <laughs> that didn't sound too good." As you said, what about the rest of you? I said, "What?" She said, "I already sent you a picture. It's your turn." Oh, blimey, so. I didn't want to, this is, I've never done this before, I didn't want to do it, never done it since. Well, no, no, not any, not pictures and stuff, I don't think. Um, so I just thought, okay, you know, we've been talking for about two months on the phone. So we'd got on quite well. Took a picture, I was on the beach. It was a really cold, windy day. And yeah, I just had to do a quick. It was kind of like you know, trying out my, my, a new phone really, just testing. <laughs> it's that kind of situation. So did that, send it to her. Never heard from her again. It's almost like she just disappeared off the planet, gone. It's honestly cool. Little my phone was blocked, everything was gone. It's like what? So yeah, that kind of put me off doing that again. And in about two thousand and thirteen, there was someone that was following me online who really liked me, and I thought, okay, it's nice, and. Again, we started talking for quite a while, and a similar kind of thing happened. She sent me a picture. I said, that's nice, thanks. <laughs> she said, your turn. And I said, what? She said, I want to see it. So I thought, well, she lived in another country, so I thought, I went online and I found a picture of um, another one. I, yeah, there's lots to choose from. I, I chose uh, a healthy looking one and I posted that. And her first response was, Wow, I'm going to come and visit you at the weekend. The problem with that situation was it wasn't mine. And if she visited me, 
you'd find out it wasn't mine. I mean, I'd, why did I have to choose like the largest one <laughs> in the world? <laughs> it was not not good. So yeah, um, so I had to sort of cancel that. It was a shame because I like we got on, but I was I suppose I should have. I just didn't think that we were ever going to meet anyway, so. I remember some of the things she said, like, uh, why is it black? Why is, why is it so big? It's just, but yeah, it's just... So that was embarrassing. That was a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was when I was a young man. So what else? Embarrassing moments. Oh, yeah, I was in a... In a um, I was I'm very young at this point, probably 18. I was in a cafe waiting to buy some an egg sandwich. And I let I let one go. Farted. I it was it was Oh man, it really bad. Really bad. <laughs> there was two people ahead of me and I think one person behind me. And like four people seated on seats either side of me. It was really rotten. And I think I had to leave. I had to get out in the end. Yeah. Another another one that, not in bad, it just made me laugh. And it was, in, it was wrong that I laughed. It was at a funeral, and again, straight away, it's wrong. But after the at the end of the funeral, after outside the church, someone came up to someone else that was there that I knew, and said hello, and she called her the name of the person that they just buried. And it was her sister. And she called her the, like, and that just made me laugh. It was so inappropriate for that slip of the tongue. Hugely inappropriate for me to be laughing as well. But I found that in the past that the more I tried not to laugh, the more I laughed. Nowadays, if I laugh, I laugh, you know. But I don't generally, you know, it's uh, there's nothing funny about this, the event uh, at all. It's just that that sort of moment. It was like, wow. I'm trying to think. At another family funeral, there was the organist was awful. It was. <laughs> it was it was kind of funny it wasn't funny and a funny event obviously but the organist the music was so out of tune it was hard to even explain the absurdity of it you'd expect that on a comedy sketch it was like like I think it's like, you know so you got, I think one of the songs was all things bright and beautiful which is all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. Well, the music was do 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 It was like, oh man, it was really bad. What other things have I done? Embarrassed? I've embarrassed myself so many times. can't think of a, a most embarrassed that I've been. There probably is. What could it be? I don't know. Anyway, Ben asks me, what's your favourite board game as a kid? And also, favourite pair of shoes, trainers, and are you and Vinny going to do your, going to your dad's 
around December as it's that thing again on the 25th. Oh, don't know about Christmas now. I had a little bit of enthusiasm after getting the taxi there before, but I can't afford to do that again. That's, I just, Vinny won't, um, Vinny can't come with me, so he has to stay here on his own. So my dad doesn't allow any pets in his house. So I'm, I'm, I think I'll probably see my dad before Christmas. He might come up this end and we meet up somewhere. He doesn't come into my house. Um, what's your favorite board game as a kid? So as a kid, because you know, I don't have any now, as a kid I, I used to like Frustration. I used to like Operation. I used to like Snakes and Ladders. I think you call them Snakes and Shoots or Ladders and Shoots. Yeah, you call it, some people call it that. In different parts of the the world, uh, I remember drafts. I always like drafts. I like easy games. Buckaroo. I mean, is Buckaroo a, a board game? It's kind of not, is it really? But I mean, maybe frustration isn't a board game either. But to me, it was a board game. Because you're kind of moving around a thing, um, small board, made of plastic, with marbles, and a big thing that you press in the middle, which makes the dice shake. Uh, what other ones? Board games. I like Monopoly. I did. I like Monopoly, but it went on too long. It, I didn't mind it if we had a drink. <laughs> I'm talking even when I was a little kid. I managed to get some wine and stuff. In then that was a normal thing in them days. You know, sort of Christmas and I think even on a Sunday we'd get a glass of wine. It'd just be pomaine or something like that. But yeah, I think I could I can handle that. And Christmas, because it's such a nice period, nice time it was. I didn't mind um, spending that time with the family, doing something pointless like playing Monopoly for three hours. I never won ever, but I think they cheated. See, I, I've I'm not a cheater, so I'd never cheated. I don't think I cheated. But I know that I used to watch what other people did and they'd be hiding money and they'd be, yeah, doing little magic tricks. But it was fun because it was, it was quite funny to play. I like the dialogue that went on between my brothers and yeah, it was quite good. Cluedo, I didn't like. It's weird, I just didn't see the point. It was, how can you have a, a board game based on a serious crime? I mean, it's just, yeah, just, yeah, just didn't, didn't appeal to me, really. Other board games. Um... Kaplunk, Kaplunk, that was another one. Dominoes, I quite like dominoes. Chess, I couldn't understand. Uh, but I never learnt it, but even when I learnt it as an adult, I still couldn't understand it. It's uh, I think it's just something you need, well, I would need to do regularly to get a hang of it and my, so I have this little concern, is 
as we discussed earlier, it's a little bit little. Uh, it's if I if I start doing something new, I might get obsessed with it, and I I didn't I don't I don't want to get obsessed with chess, you know, and I've been like that all my life. I kind of get always had to have a special interest, and I kind of get completely absorbed. Even, you know, if I started doing jigsaw puzzles, and I thought, but I did do a jigsaw puzzle. I don't know if it's still on YouTube, but I, I basically did like this, but whilst doing a jigsaw puzzle, just talking. It was quite popular for a while, actually. And I don't. Yeah, if I get into stuff, something like that, I'll end up with hundreds and hundreds of jigsaw puzzles. And what's the point in that? I mean, just there's, there's no room to be having, storing stuff like that, really. Um, that's why I have to be a little bit careful that I don't get too caught up in new things uh, you know even with the website I have to really really rail kind of hold myself back from getting too caught up with the whole building of that because if I do that I don't do anything else so it's about pacing myself really I can't think of any other board games. What's the one? Wasn't there a racing one with horses? What was that called? I'm sure there was. Sabutio. That was one. I know, not, that's not the one, the horses. Sabutio. My brother was obsessed with football, so we used to play Sabutio. That was all right. I quite liked... I mean, I'm not. I'm not into football, but I definitely found Sabutio. Keep saying a word for some reason. I found it a lot easier to play than the actual football game itself. I think he used to paint the figures. You know the the color of the teams and stuff like that. So he was really into all that. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I was into girls, so I wasn't so interested in football. I'm trying to think, what else did I? What you mean you can't be interested in girls and football when you're a kid? <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny, right? When I was at school. Apart, I mean, I was, I was so little, but apart from that, I remember some time the kids would, I don't know, be less generous with their compliments towards me because I didn't play football, wasn't interested in playing football. Yeah, I was doing karate twice a week so it's almost you know because I wasn't playing football made me less of a boy back then I'm doing karate I'm kicking and punching people and getting kicking, kicked and punched by much older bigger people but because I don't want to play football it's just the end didn't see any point to it I can see why people watch it, I do. Yeah, it can be exciting to watch. But to to play, I didn't, you know. But in the same in the opposite way, didn't really see much point watching people do karate. I enjoyed doing it, but watching people do it, like on T V and the Olympics and stuff, it didn't really do much for me. 
I liked it in movies and I liked watching boxing. Hmm. I mean, all pretty much through school, I was the last to be picked in the team. I mean, I was picked after the boy in the wheelchair. It was honestly, I was that unpopular for sports. They just, I don't know why. I mean, I was, I could do stuff. I don't think it just they just didn't like me. I used to be able to climb up the rope. You know, those big ropes, you know, that go all the way up to the ceiling. I used to be able to climb up with one arm, with one hand, just keep pushing up and then grabbing it, and then putting myself up and then grabbing it. I used to be able to get up there with one arm. It was difficult to get down with just one arm. It's like, you know, the thing is, I used to have to wear heavy boots so I didn't float away. So it wasn't a great feat, really, because, well, they weren't really great big feet. But it wasn't a great thing because I didn't weigh much. So I guess walking, I could have probably just <laughs> used the, the rope to guide me as I gently floated up towards the ceiling. It was harder to get back down. Those were the days. I was good at uh, dodgeball though. Yep, that's the only sport I was any good at, dodgeball. Favourite pair of shoes, trainers? No, nothing really. I'll tell you the only pair of shoes I'm ever going to probably remember that I've owned was a pair of they're like cowboy boots when I was 16 and this is a period when I was well maybe 15 15 yeah 15 probably 16 15 and I think I was getting 60 pound a week at this point so it must have been, yeah, I must have still been 15, blimey. Anyway, I went and I bought these boots and I was wearing... Yeah, wow. And they clicked. I remember when there was no one around, I'd click the heels to cover. There's no way like, there's no, no place like home, there's no place like home. But only if there was no one else around. Because I wasn't strange. And the they clicked when I walked along, and I just I think they made me a little bit taller as well, but they were a little bit constrictive or whatever on the toes because I got quite uh, quite wide feet, not like clowns' feet, but my toes are better off when they're not squashed. Really, I would say. So they're probably the only pair of shoes I've ever had that would probably stand out to me. Yeah. I do have a pair of boots, like hiking boots, but I don't I don't wear them. Really. Just to have to bend over and do the shoot do the laces up and it's just a bit of a chore. I wish I had some biscuits. I want a biscuit. <laughs> so that's the only pair of shoes that I'll ever really trainers yeah, not really never never had any I've had a I've probably had three pairs of decent shoes in my life as an adult like decent um, well made possibly even expensive shoes I say expensive but you know decent ones uh, I got some 
Yeah, I got some 10 years ago. I'm not sure if they're the ones I got now or not. I don't know, to be honest. They may be the ones I still got, but they were, yeah, they might be, They were, but they were nice back then. They're a little bit worn now. I bought some shoes other than the boots. I bought some shoes. Yeah, twice I bought shoes for funerals. And and I did get some shoes, but yeah. Probably, yeah, hardly any really nice shoes at all. Most of my 20s, I didn't even wear shoes. It was just trainers. Then when I reached my 30s, or the late, late 20s, 30s, I wasn't wearing trainers anymore. I was wearing shoes, but kind of half trainer shoes, if you know what I mean. Like decent shoes, but comfortable. I like comfortable shoes. And then I was working in offices for quite a few years on and off, so I always was wearing just black shoes, really. And then I went through a period, yeah, late 2000s. I had the same pair of shoes three times in a row. Like when they wore out, I got another pair exactly the same. And they were really easy to wear. I think they were hush puppies, I think. And they were comfortable straight away. No, no slip, no blisters or anything like that. So, but this, they stopped making the ones that I liked. And then that threw me off. I didn't know what to do. So, yeah. Yeah, I do need to buy. I mean, I've got some shoes now that are supposed to be waterproof, but they're not. They're not at all. No, they're not. I had wet socks. We shouldn't be walking in the pond then, should you? No, maybe not, but it's, they do get wet. They do. And I thought waterproof meant that the water they could, couldn't get in. And called me old fashioned. That's what I thought that meant. That meant. I thought that meant. That made sense to me when I said it. I do need to get some new shoes for the winter. Uh, okay, Diana. So thank you, Barry, Ben, and Ruth. Now, Diana, do you drive? No. No, 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 no. Never do. I've had two sets of driving lessons. Never. And one of the problems I had was... I don't know what, what's the right way to describe it is a spatial issue I had a spatial issue I couldn't I was either too far away from the pavement or too close to the pavement or in the middle of the road too close to the middle of the road you know I could never could never really get the spatial correct and yeah I didn't I didn't I didn't feel particularly optimistic about my chances as a driver because I was struggling to reach the basic fundamentals so yeah I never ended up driving in the end I wasn't that bothered because for most of my life, well, first, let's, but for twenties anyway, I couldn't have afforded a car to run a car. 
in my 30s, there was times when I could have done had I had a driving license. And during my 40s, I couldn't have afforded to drive a car either. So there was kind of a decade when I could have driven, I suppose. Maybe not all through it, but, you know, parts of it. So, yeah, don't don't drive. Um, so the last question. Me, 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 me. Josephine. Uh, does it surprise you to know the countries that people listen in from? Yeah, it does actually. And Josephine says, I'm in Adelaide, Australia, but originally from Scotland. I relate to a lot of what you talk about and love how giving you how giving you are in sharing your experiences and how you show such empathy as is the way with people who have been through a lot in their life. Uh, I wonder if you know how much help you've been to so many. Much love to you for your kindness. Wow. Uh, thank you, Josephine. That was a lovely, lovely message. So, I guess the answer really to your question, but the, the last part is, well, thank you. I know it's it's more a statement than a question, which I really appreciate. I don't really class myself as having empathy. Um, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm, I'm a bit of a weird, weird person. Um, so, for example, my neighbour opposite me. Okay, forget, okay, let's not focus on a particular person. Let's say a neighbour. Let's say if it was a neighbour opposite me. A man in his 80s. I don't know, just as an example. I would pretty much do anything for him. To help him, if I could. But I don't necessarily want to spend time talking to him. I don't want to be in his life. I don't want to be involved in his day-to-day -day stuff. Because I just guess I'm not interested in what he, you know. Not in a bad way, I just generally am not that interested. But when he's in trouble, I'm there for him. And I have been. And I always will be. If I can. But I don't kind of class that as being empathic but what I've noticed is when I'm around people that have got when I spend a bit of time around someone that's really going through it I actually feel ill afterwards but if I can do something to practice practically to help them I feel good but just sitting listening which is one of the best things to be able to do I should know I was a counsellor I feel ill afterwards and when I was a counsellor I felt ill not always but it did I got ill doing it I wasn't, it wasn't suitable for me to sit listening to people's problems. Even though I think I was quite a good counsellor in, in some way, but I got ill. It, you know, really, really, I <laughs> really got ill. So I don't know if I'm, I don't know. I really appreciate what you said and I'd like to be like I'd like to be like the person that you were describing there. I don't know if I am though. I don't know. I'm really not sure. I do I do I love helping people. That's a fact. Um 
I don't know why that is though. It's not because I'm wanting something in return. It's not because I'm wanting to go to heaven or you know what I mean. It's not. I'm not sort of thinking into the future that oh, if I'm nice to people, then they'll be nice to me. Or if I'm, although I do believe that is the case to be honest, but in a more of a, I suppose a a universe thing, a karmic way. You know, if it's if you the the we get back what we give, kind of that is a it's not my idea that it's it's the, it's an idea with the whole kind of karmic. So I don't buy a lot of the karmic stuff. I'm not I'm not into the idea that I'm. I've gone all serious, haven't I? I'm not. I'm not into the idea that my life is the way it is because of what I did last time I was here. Because I'm not taking responsibility for that. I'm sorry. I'm not. You know, if if I was here again, I don't know if I was. I don't care. But the whole idea of like oh we're going through this because of something you did in your last life like come on but I do believe if you're kind and help other people then only good things can come from that And that's how I've tried to be. I haven't hasn't always worked. And I'm not always kind. I'm just a human being. Um, I've got bipolar, so I've got I've got mood swings, and I try not to be. Sometimes I'm not nice, but at the same time I try not to be nasty. So when I'm in that mood of not being nice, I really make the effort to keep away from people. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm not sure what I am. I know a few people in the past uh, I struggle when I try to explain that I care. Doesn't mean I'm always interested though. It's, it's, it's really, I don't have a natural interest in people like generally have a general interest I'm interested from a psychological perspective especially about crowds and you know social psychology and uh, stuff like that that does interest me but when I'm interested when 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 I focus on something and I ask somebody a question or a follow-up follow question to something they've said, that only ever happens when I'm interested in their answer. So I never ask a question unless I, I want to hear the answer. So I don't, I'm not great with small talk. I think small talk's a bit of a bad word really, isn't it? Because one person's small talk might be another person's life story. And in my case it is, isn't it? I mean, what I talk about half the time is just a bunch of nonsense, but if you break through the code, I'm actually telling you all about myself. Kind of. some In a, in a way, in a way. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to think. But um, as far as surprising me, the countries that people listen to me. You know, I tell people like family and maybe friends. I'm sure they don't believe me. 
They don't believe that it's people all around the world listening to me. It's almost like I'm just like a liar, you know, just making it up. But there's people from like pr practically every country of the world. I and mean, when I was on YouTube back in... <sighs> When was it? 2000 and... 10. No, 2011. No, 2010. Yeah, 2010. I used to... do counselling at this... U the, the children's charity and I'd be there in the evening and sometimes I'd help volunteer and I'd stay there so even if I didn't have clients all the way through I'd stay there till a certain time because there was a another member of staff there and would leave at the, at the same time and I would be on the computer checking my stats for my YouTube channel and I think I had like 128 different countries people were watching me on YouTube and I just couldn't believe it and I remember telling the member of staff all about it and she her eyes glazed over <laughs> she was not interested but I just couldn't believe I mean I might be exaggerating the amount of countries but there might only be 30 in the world I don't know <laughs> I don't know but there was people from all over the world and it's weird to think over the years the amount of people that would have heard my squeaky voice yeah millions it's weird isn't it probably millions of people even if they only heard me say hello and welcome to www.jasonnewland.com and they, they turned it off imagine how many people heard me just for a few seconds maybe for two minutes and the maybe people that have listened to me for just a short period just for helping them to get through something I mean I've yeah I've had messages from people telling me that I helped them get through university or yeah different things and it's it's always out of the blue I just don't expect it I mean even back in 2009 I think it was I had a message from uh, someone telling me that his mum listened to me in the last sort of period of her life and it helped her and he was just thanking me I was like wow I don't know who the person was I don't, I don't I didn't know who his mum was, never spoke to her, never had contact with her. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite powerful stuff, really. See, if I hadn't done this, if I hadn't actually started this whole journey of making recordings back in 2006 18 years ago 19 years in January it will be I wonder where I'd be now I wonder what I'd be doing yeah strange so yeah it does does make me wonder I mean I don't get 
great statistics anymore. I can't get great, like what I mean is details. And I'm still reaching different parts of the world. and But I don't always know kind of where. I mean, YouTube is still quite slow, but it's, it's going to start growing. But I just, oh yeah, I just find it. I mean, there's periods of time where I just, I don't get much feedback. And that's what I really would like. I mean, back in, you know, a few years back, I would ask, especially when I was on YouTube, I'd ask people on Facebook, Twitter, wherever else, to share my videos to share the post which is kind of what social media was for wasn't it to if you could pr if you was promoting yourself then someone could share that post onto their page and more people could get to see you and but no one shares any of my stuff it's like everyone it's like let's all keep it a secret this weird man let's keep this weird man secret we don't want to is everyone embarrassed with me I don't want anyone to know that they listen to me. <laughs> I'm a damn, <laughs> I'm a dirty secret, blimey. Oh, so, yeah, it's quite cool to know that people listen to me from all over the world. It's, uh, recently I had someone, well, I say recently, it's a while back, that someone contacted me to, to let me know that I have a have listeners in China, but they have to use a D is it DNS, whatever it is, you know, like a proxy to cover up their where they're from because they can't access my stuff on the Chinese internet. So they have to use, uh, pretend they're from America or something, or from London, in order to listen to me. So, I've got people in India, I've got people in Saudi Arabia, all over, listening. So, it's cool. And I suppose if I continue doing it, Maybe more people will listen. I tell you what's weird though. Really strange. I bet you there's people listening to me now that weren't even born when I started doing this. When I started making recordings. And I don't mean the Let Me Boy to Sleep because that's what, six years. So it will be, the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast will be seven years old in... What was it October, November, December, January, February? About five months' time. Seven years. 2018. Wow. So six and a half years old. So that's it, really. So thank you for your kind words. Thank you for all your questions. Um, I mean, I've been doing this Q&A Friday for a while now, so I, you know, I'll probably just continue doing it. Yeah, I think. Uh, maybe next week I'll try and put the questions out a little bit earlier. Because I did, I left it to the last minute this week. I just forgot about it. Um, but that's it. That's me done. I don't know how long I've talked for. But thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. And be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Relax in a more deep 
and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find. Like some people do. And myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording. That really. Resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from... We're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualisation. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was the person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful, and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players press the play button in fact it might have even been a tape tape recorder I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized, really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down
Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it 
comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I've noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. When I 
whenever I imagine my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just take in some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity, with a joyful heart time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has 
has slowed down. Slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs so deeply and the feelings the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders Deepening each part of your body further and deeper and deeper. Noticing the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings. 
feelings in your wrists. muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow. stomach peaceful in your stomach back, notice
Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Comfort increasing. Deeply relaxed. Spread in those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. your elbows, feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. tips of your toes, to your eyes, your fingers, all the way to your lower back. Letting go, really letting go. Yeah. 
peace. Drifting. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body, just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
not have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Drifting. Total peace. Letting go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up. And your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling of positive healing. An energy that spreads through your body like a wave 
of comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it. It becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing. And as I move down your body, starting at your head, the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply. And those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead. 
just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm and loose. As you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. Relaxed and calm. Focus in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat. Relax in and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck, relaxed and loose and calm. back of your neck, focus in on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back and moving either side of your spine right from the top of your back all the way down to the bottom of your back, down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. the top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And 
as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting and in your lower back there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort that spreads into your hips so down your lower back and into your hips into the area where your coccyx are and into your buttocks and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so As you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose. They're already feeling Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle. So smooth. and calm and the feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles, but also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms. Relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. Healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders. 
shoulders, which sends that deep healing message into your arms. You may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread all the way into your wrists, your forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so light and gentle, Focus in now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar relax deeply feels so 
fingers. fingertips attention to the front of your body, so comfortable. Focus to your legs, muscles in your thighs, your knees, so muscles and your shins completely
peaceful and so calm. So peaceful. So calm. go of everything so I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1 You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
pain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. We're going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now Focus in on your eyes. I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now. Ten.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
Well, you're counting down from ten to one. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? We could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down 10 Nine, eight, seven, six. And just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down so I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space now. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's a very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us. all through our lives and it may, it may seem to sound really weird but I think that all of our body parts especially our thighs need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us and I know this may sound a bit strange maybe you think why am I surely I should be out in in the garden hugging a tree or something well it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree that's why I'm doing this indoors otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree no I can't see the television from the tree if you move down to your knees Gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally, if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you And you can still have that attention on your thighs. And maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs 
your shins and your calf muscles and the bones between your knees and your feet incorporating of course your ankles so important you know, anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area a thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime helps us to balance helps you to get around and be mobile and there's the calf muscles of course when I was younger I couldn't see the point in calf muscles it didn't seem to do anything Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. And there's that movement of energy. Because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course there's the muscles, the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff, it's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and a massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, and to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. It's very, it feels very nice when you stroke it. And that might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. that fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees, your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet feet also go and my toes clap. They're so happy. Your legs really are amazing. And I know that talking about talking about your legs is probably possibly the among the most Im, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true legs are amazing your legs deserve not just respect they deserve to relax deeply They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is a tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful six Two. slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. As you focus on your mind, you may notice 
notice that there are some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them you just need them you require them to just calm down slow down quiet down for now So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude, over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. And more relaxed. Starting with number seven.
as you now notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing and focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. In just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. More and more relaxed with each number from eight to one, you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands and fingers, becoming with each 
in again. Starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. And this is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and 
anxiety, tension. Just generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. Place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways, more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. healing energy soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins, traveling to each and every single part of your body. start to realize that actually that healing energy it's not just entered into your brain it's become part of your brain and that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, Not just your physical health, but your mental health. 
things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you you're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including of course your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. Opening up to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now. as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness. It just feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be and that positivity grows within you each and every day moving forward you're going to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity because from now on your mind rejects negativity from now on you're going to start noticing when negativity arises You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will 
turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? It feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. You can continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now. Twenty. Nine. 
routine. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifteen. Eight, seven, six, This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind. Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body Those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's 
kind of expected. You expect, when you listen to my voice, to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. Your focus increases. Which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. down, your mind relaxes, and even though we've not really started the focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension, healing all the parts of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. brain fills with that healing energy, the feeling of comfort and relaxation increases. in a way that your mind starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed start to drift if that's what's needed so if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also what will happen.
speakers by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me. You give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command your body and your mind to relax deeply and to drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start to just drift, and when you come back again, and you hear me talking, and I'm focusing on a different part of your body. yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting and you're alert again to my voice, focusing on a different part of your body, starts to relax even deeper. Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, eventually that drifting continues to sleep and that's the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you because when you do and if you do fall asleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep. so nice to relax into your own body and mind as you, f- as you feel that healing energy spreading through you relaxing you so deeply relaxing you so on your eyes moving down to your jaw
chest. Your stomach. Your back. Your spine. Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focus in on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they almost seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? It's almost as if they just mix together. Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focus in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
observing your ankles. sensations in your ankles. Noticing now the toes on both of your feet. Being aware of how your toes to sin how your entire body feels noticing Letting go Letting go Letting go Of everything go letting go letting go I'm going to start now, and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, 
and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel you feel confident in how you look as well so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you. So you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head. I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and there's a massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massage in the, the back of your neck. 
especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders from the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, needing, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and you can let your fingers in there. And it can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. Don't worry, it'll still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. 
into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. You can feel nice, and you can feel safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so, so relaxing. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. A 
start to massage your back, the biggest part of your body. Starting at the top, starting again where you already be at being, that area at the top in between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. Making a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the your back, but the the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. Almost the part that connects your front to your back. And just massaging down firmly but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, yet firm as you choose. And eventually we get to the spine, we can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. We can do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down go all the way down to the bottom of the spine, each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. Now I'm going to move to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, I'm going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side. Or to the middle, in fact, to where your spine is. Massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet, yeah, Lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process 
which will continue long after this recording is over. And massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back. Kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move or we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. Because it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up. And massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move to the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down Including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging 
the back and the sides of your thighs gently and firmly there's a lot of muscles there it's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body but that's up to you You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands and fingers digging deep. To your ankles. And the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, and you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. Moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down, and this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles 
firmly and gently. Moving down your ankle into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet, the bottoms of your feet. Stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually. And that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. And as we move up, I can clean my hands, make them more fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead. Your eyes are closed and I can just stretch your eyes a little bit. Pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, your chin. Just moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. And just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next. moving my hands from underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest. then moving down again. And then allowing my hands 
hands to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down to just below your rib cage. Massaging up again, giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. Remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well an area that really doesn't get much attention but feels really good when it's massaged just stroking my hands down the sides of your body or just below your arms all the way down to your hips Move into your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently, massaging. one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button, I'm going to move around to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. As I now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. Then going the other way around. There's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs muscles, massaging them, and I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. And moving down to your knees, gently Massaging your knees, sliding down your shins, putting 
the pressure on either side of your shin gently, softly but firmly moving down to your ankles stroking the tops of your feet and then with each foot in each hand just gently massaging the whole of the foot the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes Massaging every part of your feet. It feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy the feeling deep. going to do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. And you're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just so it's not a big Below, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. As we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. And if you need 
to sleep, you'll also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel more and more deeply relaxed, more and more deeply tired. down, the more your mind starts to drift, and you may find that you stop listening to me after a while. there may be background sounds where you are, you'll be aware of those sounds at the moment. You may start to just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's Horace the pigeon likes to say hello sometimes, and there's the odd plane that goes by, maybe traffic and trains in the distance, but none of that seems important whatsoever. you blow out, the less important anything is, the more candles you blow out, the further you seem to move away. sounds and from general day to day stuff seems to just move away on its own as you feel number do you hear me say and then you blow that candle out too so easy 
so simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one hundred. When you blow that candle out, you'll find immediately a slight change. as well as a real sense of positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding. Six. Candle 
twenty three.
Seventy eight candle seventy seven
do. Sixty four. Sixty. Candle sixty nine. 
Fifty-six. Candle fifty four. Candle fifty two. Fifty one. Candle fifty.
Forty-seven. to
handle.
28. Seven.
Commodore 17.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort 
to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, when you give the say-so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like a breath of relief. Oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down on a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and, oh, oh feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two and it feels blissful and just by sitting down like that your body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset in your mind you're prepared to let go of everything and just completely allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate Any tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally, the moment
most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind and it is almost like a literal unwinding It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. And you may find the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realise you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not, may not actually be aware of what we need. What we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go, allowing them to drop onto the floor. You start to Get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. Breathing seems easier and more natural, effortless, as that cool air enters through your mouth or nose into your lungs. Breathing in comfort and relaxation, and then just breathing out any excess remaining tension or stress from every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are, have come to a standstill or maybe just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between 
the relaxation of your body and uh, relaxation of your mind let you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed really is a great healing experience for you and has so many positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of the body and mind. Even your bones are relaxed. Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. And as you focus from the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice the benefit of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to relax, it sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to really even more deeply relaxing even more completely letting go of any remaining thoughts or concerns Because they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, concentrated healing. of your brain, feeling so loose and comfortable, so relaxed and peaceful. So light 
sense of deep, deep comfort really does allow you to enjoy those ever increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body even deeper, even deeper, much more deeper much more comfort spreading through your body and your mind feeling so peaceful and calm so very, very peaceful in every part of your body, letting go of everything, everything so peaceful. You feel deeper and deeper relaxed, deeper and deeper relaxed. Calm. So of your body so that you feel amazing, so relaxed, so peaceful, so relaxed and peaceful. Do a body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, but just accepting 
observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body. Just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are. To notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So we're going to start off by focusing on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move your fingers a little bit. Open and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movements. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. But only very gently and very slowly. Noticing how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focus in on your thighs and I just ask you to gently tense your thighs just very very gently just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. Noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Focus to the back of your neck. Just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles 
Of course, they lead to the side of your neck. They also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you were looking up. Maybe moving your head down, as if you were looking down. Perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left, but only very slowly and very gently, not trying to force anything, it has to be very, very gentle just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly, so you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment, and just noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go. Notice how the tops of your arms feel right now. As we now focus your stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin, maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that is a difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up Maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this 
this moment. Just noticing the physical sensations of your lower abdomen. As we move your attention to your mouth. in your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing how your tongue and your mouth feels. your mouth, moving it to your left, maybe pressing it gently against the side of your mouth, and then to the right, gently to the side of your mouth, perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth, and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth, always very slowly, in a very, very gentle, so that you can focus on your wrists, and I'm going to ask you to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion, very Gently and slowly, just so that you can feel the sensations that you are currently experiencing. Experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again very, very gently and slowly. Observe your lower back. And that back part is 
just above your hips, where your coccyx are. also really does include the sides of your body, because those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks, the sides of your hips. physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side. Just enough for you to gauge how you feel in your lower back. Perhaps you could even. physical sensations of your lower back. As we now move your attention chin all the way up to near where your ears are, the whole of your jaw, and you can just, if it's okay to do so, gently Open your mouth, not wide, no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and then closing your mouth very gently. And now, your chest area, and you don't need 
to do anything, to move your chest, because it moves every time you breathe, and it moves very gently and slowly, automatically. in your forearms, and when you do that, you can feel your elbows as well. focus on the rest of your back, your upper back, and the middle, the middle of your back. This part of your body moves also every time you breathe. You may not notice that. Usually, as you observe.
six, the groin, those muscles and those bones in your midsection. Just noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently. side to side very gently and slowly very Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind. And your mind itself just starts to gradually... It doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense, or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. 
starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings just thinking them thinking about them as just being neutral just feelings not being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings of all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. The bones. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm on your right arm? Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to it may not feel like anything other than just a feeling you know it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. But of course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. your lower back the 
the left side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips and also moving up into the middle of your back and sometimes like right now actually I want to focus on that part. I want to focus on my buttocks. And then I focused on my, the middle of my back. It almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched. Very gently. But just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything. To try to stretch your lower back it just seemed to happen the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back comes along that feeling In your chest. Just noticing. What sensations. You are experiencing. In your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles. In your chest. And of course if you're female. There's possibly the breasts. If you're male. You've got the different, well mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back. As well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being. With whatever feeling there is. In your chest. And what I noticed that I focus on my chest, I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels... It feels okay. doesn't feel 
a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in your back. It feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, And you do tense a muscle and you let it go and you let it relax. It relaxes way more than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a uh, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when relaxing deeply. It's important to be kind to yourself. As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? How calm and peaceful is your mind right now? With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to. Because you know the intention Behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect 
to happen. For relaxation, to fill your body maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away drifting it's almost just as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship and movie space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. Continue to relax. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. find that every now and then you realize that you weren't listening to my voice 
because your mind started to imagine something different maybe you started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state and then you become aware of my voice again and even though you may want to focus on my voice you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety as you feel more comfort spreading through your body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature And even if you can hear background sounds, they just don't seem to matter anymore. There's that sense of peace spreads through your mind like a gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety or stress that was there before and blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense of relaxation that is filling your body your mind and as you focus on your mind I'm going to count down from ten down to one and with each number you hear slightly more relaxed just just slightly so from 10 down to 9 just a slight movement from 9 down to 8 
just another small change in how you feel. Eight down to seven. That feeling is a, is a gap, almost like a gap that starts to get wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind compared to the feelings you have that are growing now. Feelings of comfort and security and confidence. And that gap becomes wider. Eight down to seven, seven down to six. And when you get to five, your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation. Almost like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want. Sucking them out through your skull. And then down to four, you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. A place where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing. As it moves down to two, when you get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel. Almost a perfect feeling. Maybe a, a sensation that you'd like to keep. A place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. When you can stay in that, that space of comfort and confidence, Confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind. Just by counting from 10 down to 1. And this is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes, close your eyes, and just count slowly from ten down to one, and re-experience these feelings in your mind. And 
when you feel that way in your mind, your body copies your mind. feeling is spread through your spine and your nervous system into every part of your body, travels through your bloodstream, healing and relaxing every particle of your existence. Can, we can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own and each time you count from ten down to one the feelings of comfort Calmness and deep, deep relaxation become stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals spread throughout your body, relaxing you so quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind so very, very easily, just by counting from ten down to one. we're going to do it now. I'm going to count from 10 down to 1 and I'd like you to repeat the number after me. So when I say 10, you can just repeat to yourself 10. Just notice, be aware of how you feel. in your mind and your body. Then when I say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine. Again, noticing the increase in comfort and Calmness in your mind and in your body. The same when I say eight. When I say seven. Six. When I say five. Four. When I say three, two, and lastly when I say one, you can repeat that number now of course when you do this on your own without listening to me, you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1, 
faster than I do, then you go ahead and do that. Or if you feel when you do it yourself that you'd like to have more, more space between the numbers, maybe take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1. It's your choice also to do. So I'm going to count from 10 down to 1. And when I get to 1, that will be the end of this recording. Unless, of course, you're listening with music, then the music will continue. Ten.
20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Now open your eyes. Noticing how you physically feel. Having counted down from 20 to 1. Allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is, I suppose, quite understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time, you're going to feel relief of tension and stress, any anxiety that you may have. Leaving through your stomach. Just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach, from your navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather. So surrounding your belly button area, that whole area, you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left, just releasing from that area. And you may notice that your stomach will become very relaxed as I count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20, 19, 18. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13,
can open your eyes again if you choose or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing. Just notice how your stomach feels. And notice as you focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focus in on your upper body, your back, chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Just noticing. And you know you may start to feel more of a sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this recording, because you would like to let go completely of everything and drift into a nice, natural, calm, relaxing sleep. So now we're going to focus on your forehead. And if you choose, you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well your forehead and your eyes, just that whole area basically, almost as if you were wearing a mask, you know, like a, I don't know, Batman mask or something, or I'm trying to think, <laughs> Zorro or something, you know, the kind of mask that covers your eyes, but also covers quite a lot of the forehead. And focusing on that area. Because that's the area that we're now going to release tension and stress from your mind, from your brain, from your mind, and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, your forehead, or your scalp. So basically any tension within your head area, including your mind and your brain and that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes as I count down again from 20 down to 1 now 20 19 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. as you scan your face, your jaw, your eyes, your cheekbones, your ears, your forehead, your scalp, your neck, your back. 
back of your neck and the front of your neck, the sides of your neck and your throat. Noticing, being aware of the comfort, the increased feeling of relaxation, not just in your head and neck, also the rest of your body. Just notice how loose and calm you feel and how easily it is to just let go completely. Let go. So what I'm going to do now is I want you to focus on the top of your head. And we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might lingering or hiding in your body or mind or head to just be sucked out of the top of your head and released into the air almost sucked out into the clouds imagine a big cloud above your head Almost like a whirlpool, and it's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head and just take it away for good. As you focus, imagine an opening in the top of your head where that tension and stress and any remaining issues, maybe worries or concerns that are of no use to you now, can all be sucked out of the top of your head and taken away. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. Nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen. Fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. 
noticing how you feel. How relaxed and calm you physically and mentally feel right now. Peaceful, your mind feels. It feels so nice to just let go, to give yourself some space to breathe easily, to think calmly, and just to take a break from all that pointless worry and concerns about things that you don't need to think about right now because this is your time to let go this is your space to enjoy feeling deeply relaxed peaceful in your mind relaxed in your body and it can feel so good so nice to just not have to do anything to be able to really enjoy that serenity that comes with letting go completely, that peacefulness that comes with being in this peaceful space, and you can keep this sense of calmness for as long as you choose. you choose to drift off into a deep, healing, natural sleep, then you can do that. It's completely up to you. And you can keep this feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose. To feel completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And I'd like you to make up your mind. That you're going to relax. I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when you're telling yourself, relax, in a gentle but firm way, that only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax, relax, you know. Um, it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same, the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality, over how you feel. Because when you say it to yourself, it means more. It's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body listens to what you say. So, for example, 
we'll test it out. We'll do a little test, a few little tests along the way, and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to relax. So I want to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying, you know, like they've got little ears, which is a bit weird. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Noticing. How your hands start to relax. Now focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax, but you, you might say relax or relax. You know, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly. Relax. Now. I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. But what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happening with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. So sort of I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there but I wasn't but I wasn't focusing on it before so I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings is still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually my hands have got a certain kind of energy like not buzzing but I can kind of 
feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension has been released. Maybe that's causing that. The next part, I think we should focus on the back of the neck. That's a part which quite often, uh, well for me, holds tension. I don't know about for yourself. But I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck, the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck and just say, relax. In your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice. You can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally. But you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck. As if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. So do that now, just say relax to the back of your neck and I'll do the same. Now what I noticed, and you may have had a similar thing, is even though I was focusing on the back of my neck, other parts started to, I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe because they want to be relaxed as well, but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders, the tension in my shoulders, and in my upper back. Whether that was because my my back and my neck was saying, well, I'm pretty much okay. It's the other parts that need attention. But my low my my back and my neck is still relaxing. But I just became more aware of other parts that needed attention now this might happen and it's not it doesn't mean that it's going wrong it just means you're being notified of more places that also want to feel relaxed so I'm going to focus on my upper back so you can do the same even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back. You just focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back, down your spine. And with me, it's more the shoulder blades that are more. Yeah, that's the parts that are really sort of uh, giving me the nod that it needs relaxing so I'm just going to ask that part to relax and you can do the same now relax your upper back something strange happened there and this often happens I've been doing this for what, 16 years or something and often I don't know why I'm surprised but amazed really that 
it can be a feeling. So when I was focusing on the back of my neck, my upper back was starting to feel quite stressed and in need of attention. As soon as I started talking to you about my upper back and talking about, you know, getting ready to ask the upper back to relax, my upper back already started to relax. It's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, just needs the attention. Just needs to be noticed. That is something that often happens in this type of situation is when you start to relax a couple of parts of your body as we've done with our hands, our eyes, our eyelids and now back of the neck, top of the back back, the rest of the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing, other parts of your body start to just become looser, I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche, you know, the little ball starts rolling and before you know it, the whole of your body is completely relaxed and calm. And if you focus on your face, you focus on your eyes, your eyelids, your eyebrows and the muscles around your eyes. Maybe you start to notice that your forehead is more relaxed than it was. Maybe your face is more relaxed. I would say my entire face is a lot more relaxed than it was. So we're going to focus now on your shoulders. Again, just like before, just tell your shoulders. I mean, you, you can do them individually. You can do right shoulder, left shoulder. I just generally do both at the same time. And just tell your shoulders as you focus on them in your mind. Focus on how they feel. Maybe... You can see them in your mind's eye. And just tell your shoulders to relax. Feels nice as they relax. But I do notice, probably especially with my back, is the connection between the different parts the back, the shoulders, the neck. Being all connected and being such a, a large part of your body. 
it's almost hard to separate them from each other. lower back has started to relax on its own. Maybe I'm going too slow. And that could be an issue because we all go at different speeds. And the idea at the beginning of this recording was for you to be able to just say to yourself, Relax. Without focusing on any particular part of your body. Because when you know that telling your hands to relax. And your hands relax. You tell your eyelids and your eyes, the muscles around your eyes and your eyebrows to relax. And they relax. You tell the back of your neck. You tell your upper back to relax. And it relaxes. Tell your shoulders to relax. And they relax. told your hands to relax, they relaxed and they continued to relax. And you told your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows to relax, they relaxed and continued. Hold the back of your neck. Focus on the back of your neck. And told it to relax. It relaxed. And continued to relax. And you told your up back to relax. It relaxed and continued to relax. As with your shoulders, you told your shoulders to relax and your Shoulders relaxed and continued to relax. And it's not just that. It's that the rest of your body 
has also been listening. And that relaxation has been spreading. So from your eyes, the relaxation spread to your forehead, around your face, into your skin, into your jaw. to the front and sides of your neck, all the way down your chest and stomach. Your relaxed hands and shoulders meet up through your arms, relaxing. Your forearms, your upper arms, your elbows, your wrists. Letting go. Your lower back. Your hips, buttocks, groin. All just start to relax or continue. Even more comfort. Spreading through your legs. All the way down to your ankles. The tops of your feet, the sides of your feet, and the bottoms of your feet. Relaxing. Into your toes. Each toe. Calm, loose, and as your body relaxes more, your mind becomes. Slower, more peaceful, to the point where if you choose to fall asleep, easily do that. Easily drift away. Because there's nothing going on in your mind. Your brain is peaceful. body continues to relax. between your body relaxing and the word that you say to yourself, relax, means that you don't need to focus on just one part, you can just focus on your entire body. word, relax, and 
happens uh, those familiar sensations of comfort spreading throughout your body. Loosening and calming and healing every part of your body. Feeling more relaxed. So all you need to do from now on is just tell yourself. Starting now with number 20. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen, sixteen, Fifteen, fourteen. Thirteen. Twelve.
seven.
to has slowed down, the muscles are more relaxed, everything is calmer, as a count say the word relax after each number and every time you hear that word relax you will feel twice as calm muscles in your body will Starting 